Well, most of the time it's because it's, uh, it's probably written in place first and produced around the record. And so it's hard to, one of my hardest things as a producer was like to reconnect because they'll be like, oh my God, you did Don't Take It Personal for Monica, give me one of those. And I'm like, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I don't know how to make that record again, you know? Or they're like, oh, you did Creep for TLC, I need a record just like that. And I'm like, well, I can't. That was just a moment within them. I, I can't make you that. I can make you another record, you know? And so it would be, get hard because as a producer, they want to say, okay, this is your sound. And if the Neptunes have a sound, call them and get the sound. We don't care what the song sounds like, just call them and get that sound. And a and people would burn you out so bad doing that. And the producers started to overshadow the artist. And it got to a point where you couldn't tell if it was Britney or if it's this person or that person because the producer was so powerful around it. And they didn't realize it in the course of happening through A&R, but all you were doing is killing off the artist and making the production uh, get to, where, to the point where it's going to be limited because if everybody heard it for free all day long, then they wouldn't want to go buy an artist. And you know, records are free all day you know, on the radio, they're on TV. You know, and so it's got to be something more special than that production to make you, you know, channel into this artist. And that's usually songwriting. It's usually a connection with the words this woman is singing or a, a connection when you hear you know, CeeLo saying crazy, you're going, oh my god, that emotion I got from this record, I got to have that again. Where's the rest of this album? You know? And that's what that's what real songwriting and music was kind of kind of about to me. You know? Well, I like that uh, when I've listened to your stuff over the years, it it evolved, it changed. Where I would hear a record and then I would be really impressed when I hear that you had actually done it because I'm like, I didn't know at first it was just this great record. Like when we did just a little while with, with Janet, Janet I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, and it just didn't sound like what had come before. So I, I like. I would have a hard time with that because as a producer, they'd be like, this doesn't sound like your last record. And I'm like, just trust me, all right? It's going to work for her, you know? It's going to work for him. But uh, I always kind of like, I always liked the fact that, you know, when I was to Kashif or Now Rogers, when Now Rogers started going to work in Europe, in London, when he started doing David Bowie and Duran Duran, and it's the first mesh of, uh, I always loved European music. I love Flood. I love Depeche Mode, the Ministry, the Smiths, you know? And I came up in that era where this kid right here was listening to Run DMC, this kid was listening to U2. And so we were just amalgamation. We didn't know any difference in music color lines, you know. And uh, as I wrote and produced, my music went that way. And, and so I didn't realize it wasn't so R&B. I didn't realize it wasn't so pop. I just thought it was just, you know, the music, the way I learned to do it. And it became my curse, and it became my greatest point. Because I died out for a while. I was like, dang, what, what were you doing? I was like, brand new heavies? <laughs> it was like, really, you did that? And I was like, yeah, because I wouldn't stay in the stream of, like, you know, if I, if I did Monica, then I wasn't going to do Brandy and do all the other girls with it. You know, if I did Pink, then I'll say, okay, well, I'll wait. Maybe I'll do Gwen Stefani later. You know, I, I would just kind of pick my battles as I went along. And still, I kind of pick my battles, you know, kind of, because everybody I don't think I'll make magic with, you know. I, I'd really rather make magic than to hear my record play for no reason. <laughs>